What's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel. I'm going to make a quick video on uh, Alpha OBD. Now, if you saw my install video on the Z Automotive uh, bypass cable, I did mention that I was uh, installing that to use Alpha OBD. So, we'll do a quick walkthrough um, on how to get into Alpha OBD and where you got to go to get to the um, uh, selections on changing things in the BCM like uh, adding uh, fog lights uh, if your vehicle didn't come with it um, fog light dropout which means when you turn the high beams on the fog lights stay on uh, changing the DRL location uh, if you don't want the LED white C bar and you want it in your turn signal or you want the DRL to be um, fog lights whatever it is uh, I'm going to walk you through that and show you how to get to those menus. So first step is uh, if you obviously have the double bypass cable, you're going to want to get one of these Bluetooth OBD uh, readers. This is just a, a V-Peak. Sorry, the mosquitoes are so bad. This is just a, v, a cheap V-Peak I got from Amazon. I think it's like 13 bucks now. You don't need to spend, you know, $100 on the... Uh, obd link and the obd link mx that it's just not necessary uh the only thing that i have found that this won't do but the obd link will is change the odometer reading and i don't care to do that uh so i've i've been able to program trailer brake controller on my ram activate sport mode activate srt pages uh, I, I've been able to do every single thing with this. So, um, so step one is going to be to go in your trunk and plug your VPeak reader or whatever OBD reader you have into that. And then shut the trunk, go into the car, and put it on run. Not start, just run. And then give me one second and let me hop into the screen uh, on my phone so you can see where I go. All right, so you're going to enter your Alpha OBD app here. Interface not connected. You're going to find uh, first you want to link your Bluetooth reader to your phone. Once it's linked to your phone, um, find it here in your Alpha OBD app. Mine's Alpha OBD, or I'm I'm sorry, OBD. And up at the top right corner it says connecting. And connected to OBD, which is my reader, OBD2. So now you're gonna you're gonna find your um, application. Obviously, this is I'm doing this for the charger. I'm gonna select charger, and you can. I mean, this this tutorial works on every every Chrysler. So Ram, whether it's a Ram, you know, um, Durango, Avenger, Challenger, it's all the same concept here. So I'm going to select Dodge Charger. You're going to want to get into your body computer. It's all selected because I've already been in here. Select body computer. Select control unit. And then this is going to be your uh, where you select your year. Now my charger is a 21. They don't have a 21. So I'm going to select my 2020 right here. And it does work. So once you select your year, you're going to go ahead and hit connect. Now it says connected to my bike uh, control module. So you can go down here to the bottom right with the uh, car with the hood open. And then you're going to hit select procedure to start. I'm going to go all the way down to car configuration. Configuration change. Select option. Now this is where you can change all of your settings. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, DRL dropout 
fog light dropout, etc. So I am going to change the DRL location to the turn signal. So it's a lot of stuff. Do not touch what you're not sure of um, and do one thing at a time. So change one setting, turn the car off, shut the door, lock it, let it sleep for a minute or two, go in, um, make sure that it changed and it didn't mess with the car. If it messed with the car, go back to what it was before and it should restore. Um, so I am looking for DRL location. And if your vehicle doesn't have DRLs and you added them, uh, DRL, this one right here, DRL customer setting option present, it's probably going to say no. You're going to want to put that to yes. That that will allow you to turn it on and off in your radio screen. So, it's uh, a lot of stuff in here. DRL lamp location. So you're going to select that, select value, and I'm going to go to the turn signal DRL, and then you're going to hit start. And then right here it says current status of the component, dedicated. So before you do make any changes, it's going to tell you what it's currently in now. It's a good idea to take a screenshot of it so you know what it was before. Um, I'm going to remember this, so no worries here. And then you're going to hit next, start. Next. Procedure completed. And then right here, current status of the component, turn signal DRL. So it changed it. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the car off, let it sleep, and see if it changed. 